But here's the one that really intrigues me. P, I don't know what, because it hasn't received a number yet. Will it be P128, 129? I don't know. It'll be published later this year. And where did we find it? Well, we, 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 we dug underneath somebody's face, and there it was. That's a mummy mask that you're looking at. Let me explain what's going on here. This is very exciting. Mummy masks, if you were the pharaoh, were made out of pure gold. If you were a wealthy person, it would be neatly carved and perhaps then covered with gold leaf and a few jewels. But if you weren't really wealthy and if you were just, well, say middle class, you could afford a sarcophagus for the body of your loved one, but the mummy mask that covered the face would be made out of paper mache. Did you know paper mache dates back that far? At least 3,000 years. Now, paper was expensive, as I already said. So you don't take brand new papyrus, no matter how much you love grandma, and make a paper mache mask out of brand new paper. You used used paper, and that's the best kind if you're a scholar because we want to find old paper with writing on it, not old blank paper, paper that's been used, paper that's been written. And of course, if you're a pagan and you have no respect for the Christians, then you, you use their writings as trash and you make paper mache masks out of their stuff. And their stuff includes the Greek New Testament. And it was from one of these masks that we recovered a fragment of the Gospel of Mark that is dated to the 80s. We could have a first century fragment of Mark for the first time ever. The more we find, we keep inching our way. Just imagine Gary Habermas now. We keep inching our way toward ground zero, the autographs. This is really amazing. What, what, we, we knew that that was a possibility. There are hundreds of these low-end paper mache masks that have been painted. But the trick was to get the, get the mask to dissolve so that we could pull apart the papyrus without losing the ink on the papyrus. That would defeat the whole purpose. And some genius came up with a solution that allows the glue to dissolve and the, paper to, the papyrus paper to come loose into pieces that could then be picked out of this little bath, and the ink is still on the papyrus and still legible. We've recovered two second century papyri, that's why I'm not certain of the numbering here, and a papyrus fragment of Mark dating to the 80s, and other Christian sermons and letters and other things as well as lots of secular stuff, and so the work will continue. This is very exciting.